Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn some of the attributes, common attributes that are available for this single line input elements. Not only for this one, so all type of input elements it will be available. Let's try to see some of the attributes. We have already seen about this type is equal to text attribute. So which takes the different types of attribute values like text, password, hidden, sub, uh, submit is for the button element. So these things for the input element we have seen. There are also so many attribute values also for the input element. We'll try to see one by one. <clears throat> and another attribute is the ID, which you know that to indicate to identify this input element, we use this ID. And we can also use the class attribute also. Name attribute. So for the name of the thing. So whenever you are trying to submit the form, so this input element value will be sent with the with this name. Whatever the name you mention, the attribute value. So that value will be sent in the in the with the with this name and the value is nothing but the value that should be highlighted in the input element so these are the normal attributes which you will be using more often so apart from these attributes we are having some of the uh, some other attributes also so for these input elements which which uh, does some special special uh, usage let's try to see those things the first one what i want to try to use the read only for example let's say that we are having two elements so i am trying to copy these one two elements so here I am having another form control with email. So let's change it to email. Oh sorry. Let's change it to email. I will be using the name also email. And here the per attribute also I'll change the email. And here we can have so let's say that I don't have a value for this one. Now let's try to see the output for this. If I try to see the output, so here we are having a form. So name which is having the default uh, highlighted value I am a text field and the email is there. So now, now the user can able to write some data here right. So user can able to write some data here. Now what I want to is I don't want the user to write the data. I want to make it as read only. So now I can use the read only attribute for this one. Now what it will happen is automatically so if you try to observe so this form will be a read only. Now I am not able to enter any value in this one. Okay, so this is a read only. So read only attribute makes the input text element just read only. So he can able to see the data, but he cannot able to edit the data. For example, if you say try to say that we have a value something like Leela at the rate Leela.com or any email ID. Now if you try to see the output, we are able to see this Leela at the rate Leela.com that I am unable to edit this done. So that means so it is just the text box is just read only. Now we have an another attribute that is nothing but disabled attribute. So if you try to see this disabled attribute, now the you now if you try to see the output, now here also the same scenario. Now, now you will be able to see this uh, text box as disabled in a in a grayish color rather than in a dark color. Now here also you may able to see that the value of this one I am a text field, but you can't edit this one. Okay. Now this one also you can't edit it and this one also you can't edit it. Then what is the difference between this read only and the disabled. So these both are one doing one and the same. So it is making. So we are able to see the read the value of this text box. But we are unable to edit the value. So in there for the read only also I am able to read the value. And for the text box also which is a disabled thing I am able to read the value. But for both of the things I am unable to edit it. So then what is the difference between this read only and disabled. So the read only and disabled attribute why what is the difference between the main difference is for this disabled attribute so whatever the element we are having it as disabled so this data whatever the data it may be having it will not be submitted to the server so we cannot send it the data to the server but whereas this read only attribute so we can send the data to the server now if you try to observe so we are having name email password and the hidden value right so there are four form controls now if i try to add some value here and if i try to submit it only the email password and the hidden value will be sent through the form data but this name will be omitted so let's try to see if i click here only the email password and timestamp is there but here the name attribute the name uh, input element also we are having but it is not sending to the form data so why because as this one is a disabled attribute so as this has a disabled attribute so that this one is completely disabled from the form so the form will not recognize this data and it will not send this data to the server Whereas this read only we will be able to just read the data and this data will be sent to the server. So this is the difference between this read only and the disabled attribute. So 
So now let's try to say that we don't have a value for this one. Okay, I'm removing this read only. And we have an another attribute that is nothing but placeholder. Okay. So placeholder, you can write something like enter email. Okay. If we try to see this, we are able to see some text inside this email. So this one, the, what is this one is? This is the text that appears inside the text input box. That basically it is used to brief, briefly describe the purpose of this box. So in order to describe the purpose of this box, we will be using. So now here, if you try to write it, you can able to write it. It is before writing, it will tell you that. So what is this actual purpose of this box? What is the data that you need to enter? You can mention it with this placeholder. And we have another common attribute that is nothing but uh, size. So it will dis uh, the size. What it will uh, what it will try to do is the physical size of the box. So we can decrease the physical size of the box. For example, let's say that I am keeping size is equal to four. Now, if we try to see this, <coughs> the email box, the text box, the physical size has been has been uh, what do I can say the it ha it has been shrinked. The maximum number of characters that can be entered into the box. Now, if we try to see. So here you can be able to enter maximum of four or five letters only. It will, it will be it will be allowing. Now we have an another attribute that is nothing but max length. So this is the max length. If I try to mention is max length of two. So the maximum allowed values or characters inside this bo text box is only two values. For example, if you try to enter one two, and you cannot enter more than two numbers. So if you want to restrict the user to enter the maximum number of characters in this text box, means you can use this max length attribute and apart from this and you can you also have an another attribute which uh, the most browser supports it if the browser support it this one will work that is nothing but spell check you may if you make this as spell check is equal to true now let's try to see if you try to see here so this is a disabled attribute right let's try to remove this disable so if you try to mention spell check is equal to true now if i try to write some gibberish here so you'll be able to see some red underline here telling that the it is trying to check the spell check so the, you can ch you can use this spell check attribute if the browser supports it so it will give you the spell check for this one now these are the most common things which we will be using these are the attributes which we will be using more common apart from this one we can also have another one that is nothing but autofocus so here if you try to see that you will be, you can have this one i am trying to remove this size 4 and you can have autofocus okay so if you try to maintain auto focus is equal to true so this automatically when the form reloads this auto focus will be on this email rather than in the email name or nothing so rather than not having auto focus in anywhere so if you want to make the auto focus in the first in whatever the element you want it so you can use this auto focus is equal to true for that particular element so that this auto focus will be there for that particular element so normally generally the thing what you need to understand is so you should have only one element that should be added to the auto focus in the form thing so this is this lets you associate a form control okay so this, this is the thing i i may i normally I, I used to say okay this is the this is all about the normal attributes so only one form associated element in a document can have this attribute specified this at auto focus should be there so we have learned what are the, uh, the important things something like read only disable and also the difference between this read only and disable we have learned it so this, this is also one of the important thing and also we have learned about the placeholder attribute auto focus attribute and max length attribute and also the size attribute so we have seen about this size attribute also size means size is equal to 10 so here it will try it will try to uh, show the it will try to uh, shrink the physical size of this decrease the physical size of this input element so these are the most commonly used attributes for the input elements Hope you understood about these attributes. In the next video, I will try to see some other input elements about the checkbox, radio button and all those things. Let's try to see in this next video. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.